Deputy, I would like you to shoot Mr. Proofrock here. Wait. Run! Up to. Let's see some white meat. You have to die, Proofrock. It's not that hard. Nice and easy, right between the eyes. See? Freeze! Well, well, well. Delta Dawn isn't on my team after all. Nevada on ABC. Brought to you by Toyota. Call toll free 1 877 Kids 313 to find out about community drug prevention programs. I can keep a kid off drugs. Don't worry. It helps coming. <laughs> Damn! That hurts. Don't move! Isn't this Kevlar a kick? We could stand here all day, shooting at each other, getting up, shooting at each other, getting up. You're not going to shoot me, Mr. Proofrock, because you're a boy. A boy playing cops and robbers. <laughs> this is the IRS. What the? Put down your weapons and raise your hands above your head. Who are you? I repeat, put down the weapons. clear through. I'll be fine. You have every reason to be proud of what you did here. Special Agent Derek Smith, IRS Criminal Investigations. I've been authorized to debrief you. This was a massive communication screw-up. Three divisions of the Treasury Department, all of us going after Sloman, none of us communicating with each other. Well, after the dust settles in this investigation, I'm going to make sure the changes are implemented so this never happens again. Small consolation for the death of a colleague, I know, but it's what it's worth. I appreciate it. The bastard didn't even bring the money. He came out here to double cross and kill all of you. You two are lucky to be alive. Let's go! You sure don't look like an IRS agent. Well, Agent Proofrock, neither do you. Tell you what I know. My organized crime task force tracks dirty money from the five biggest mob families in the East Coast. 
About three years ago, we noticed huge amounts of cash being driven into this little town in the middle of nowhere, Nevada. The name that kept popping up with each of these shipments was... Dwight Sloman. You got it. We also learned that the mob owned many of the local businesses, the Quick Shop, Nanette and Janet's Diners, as well as the Versailles Casino. What we're hoping to find in these records is the mechanism that Sloman used to launder the money. So far, we haven't found any big payouts. But you're not going to. That's how money laundering works, Carson City. The mob sends a mule into the casino to win big. Suddenly, dirty money is clean. But here, the mules don't know that they're mules. Let me float a scenario. You got a mobster. Let's call him Sal. Now, Sal works out of Chicago. The feds are cracking down on money laundering and none of Sal's usual scams, offshore accounts, shady banks in Mexico, work anymore. So Sal's got to get creative. He needs to think big, outside the box, on a national scale. And that's when it hits him like a bolt from the blue. Sal needs a town, someplace off the radar where one man of dubious morals controls almost all of the businesses, as well as ownership of the Versailles Casino. A casino unlike any casino I've ever seen. A place where the locals win big and everyone else goes home a loser. Sloman took the dirty money from the mob, Sal's money, and paid it out at a rate of 62% to local townsfolk, who spent their newfound wealth at local businesses. Businesses that are, in fact, owned by our very own Sal. And, of course, Sloman gets his piece of the pie. So Sloman gets a quarterly million in change for overseeing the laundry? Mm-hmm. And then Silas Bodnick figures out that his boss was on the mob payroll, got greedy, and he sent Caleb Moran to rob the casino. Sloman finds out terminate Silas Bodnick and Caleb. And to tie up loose ends, he gets rid of the assassin Oswald Wilkes. And pinned all of their murders on me. Well, obviously, all charges against you are going to be dropped. Sheriff Gaines is being encouraged to resign, and we're in the process of installing competent law enforcement. Do the file, sir. I understand that you were looking for these. Watermark Consolidated. Sloma set it up in 1984 as a shell. Based on what you're telling me, it was his way of operating this vast enterprise for the mob while remaining anonymous. So, those guys work for Sloman? Muscle on loan from the families back east. They made sure the residents of Push stayed in line, and Sloman stayed honest. Pretty well-dressed thugs. Well, the thing I've learned here in Push, Nevada, no one is who they appear to be. Everyone's got a secret. Let's let them do their work. A town where everybody's on the take and not one person speaks up? Not everyone knew. That's a really brilliant part. And the mob had the Versailles and the banks under their control. So why tell every security guard and truck driver and cocktail waitress? <laughs> yeah, but of those that suspected, someone reached out. And that's what brought me here. One citizen fed up with corruption stands up for what's right. Kind of restores your faith in the whole system, doesn't it? You headed out today? I still don't know. Who sent me this? Jim, we caught the bad guy. It's over. Let it go. Hello, Joe. Hey. Nah. Big doings in town today. <laughs> my father's in federal custody. And I saw the well-dressed men let off in handcuffs. But I'm having a hard time believing that it's really over. I don't feel safe yet. Life like you had, I don't think safety's in your cards. I'm getting tired of danger, Joe. I need your help. I need you to hide this. Bible? It's a very special Bible that can't be found. Yeah, who's looking for it? Maybe no one now. But I can't risk being found with it. And you're an honest man. A man everyone believes incapable of telling a lie. Man, what you're asking me to do? Lie for you? My house will come down, you know that. 
I won't blame you if it just sits there. You know, night and weekend PCS minutes from Sprint. Details. It's past. Every parent tries to protect their children. An unthinkable secret is discovered. I need to know what happened to me. That will change everything she believed about him. If you don't tell her, I will. And herself. <laughs> A new alias followed by a new practice, ABC Sunday. Um, yeah, maybe another time. Now, my waffle iron's hot. Okay, Delilah, you need to go home. BRB. I don't love BRB. Well, that's not I'm really. I'm leaving him. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. So I can go with you. Afraid I can't. Oh, please, I'll be a good girl. I'm gonna step outside. No, Jim, take me out of this town. I can't. Cause I love you, Jim, Jim. And I like you a lot, Delilah. Which is why I'm going to step outside for a moment and let you get dressed. Why, well, I am dressed. I was thinking, I was thinking about getting undressed. No! Okay? You don't have to do this. If you are so unhappy, you can leave on your own. You are a very smart, strong woman. See, see, you know the real me. <laughs> you can see inside my soul. Delilah, <laughs> this is wrong. No, wait, wait. Jimmy. I'm leaving. Jimmy, don't be mad at me. Please don't be mad at me, Jimmy. I couldn't stand it if you were mad at me. Come on, Jimmy, please. Look, you can get on top of me. Ride me out of town. Hey! Delilah! Cut the catawan. It's time to go home. Why would we drive or take taxis? One young orphan tries an 18-day outing to climb Oracle Mountain. Why is this news? Because he's blind and deaf and bound to a wheelchair for life. World's biggest you want a bite? Visible from space. No. Uh, thank you. Shoot yourself. Look, about your wife. Uh. Delilah's going through a bit of a rough patch. I'm sorry you had to see it. It's nothing we can't handle. What I think it is, she's bored. I've told her, take a class. Start a small business from the house. But frankly, it's a self-esteem thing. Hey, honey. Is that a weird coincidence or what? We had exactly the same thought at the same time. Come bid our farewells to Mr. Prufrock. That's synchronicity, that is. I guess it's just the universe's way of saying we belong together. Safe trip. Hope your car holds up all the way back to Carson City. <laughs> Sounds like you broke that poor little girl's heart. Um, it's not what you think. It hardly ever is. I guess you'll be wanting to check out. Yeah, I'll just uh, put it on my credit card. I don't work like that, Mr. Prufrock. 
I'll need to assess your bill, tally your individual charges, and that takes time. My fees are not based on a fixed rate. They fluctuate. Based on what? My mood. Leave me your address. I'll send you the bill when I figure it out. sustenance for the road. Thanks. Just in case you spill. Thank you for all your kindness. something I need to say to you. Strong words for a man who's usually so full of questions. I don't have any questions tonight. I have answers. I almost died today. And by sheer luck, my life was spared. I got a second chance at life today. And so did you. Quite a speech, Jim. It's been quite a day. You come here to talk, or you want to dance? What happens now? You ride off into the sunset. Go back home, back to work, back to my life. That's it. You just pick up where you left off? Well, I get a feeling that people take a little bit of this place with them when they leave. You're not like most people. Most folks don't ever leave. Will you? Now? Now? That my father's gone? I, I really don't know. I never really thought about my future before. I never thought I had one. Looking into your eyes, I feel like there's a world of possibilities. Hope I remember this feeling after you're gone. Is this you and me? An act that you can just turn on whenever you feel like it? What do you think? I should go. You should. You're right. I hope you found what you're looking for. Quite a sculpture. Yeah. Yeah, it looks better when it's uh, assembled. You gonna be able to put it back together? Yeah. I think so. I have, I have all the pieces. It's just a matter of uh, fitting slot A into slot B. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. As long as you got all the pieces. It's a cocoon. One big cocoon. Excitement has reached a fever pitch. Crowds gather, trying to catch a glimpse of the cocoon. 
The cocoon, friend or foe, go. It's big, ugly, and different. Oh, it's unique, it's amazing, it's very exciting. This just in, cocoons are now being sighted across the country. And all we know is, it's one big cocoon. One big butterfly, son. Hey, how's it going? A whole new internet service has landed. Introducing MSN 8, bringing you better email, smart parental controls, and tougher junk mail protection. It's better with the butterfly. New MSN 8. Hi, can I help you? Yeah, I think I'm... <laughs> now at Sears Auto Center, all tires are on sale. America's number one tire store. Sears. Where else? Long enough. Way. Red Bull gives you wings. Oh, Sisyphus. <laughs> Bush Nevada will continue in a moment here on ABC. We asked this volunteer to tell us what was more painful. Getting cut off on dial-up? Or getting tackled by professional football players? Dial-up. Definitely more painful. Comcast high-speed internet. Now at a dial-up price. Just $19.99 per month for six months. Can we get up now? Ow. Turning raw metal into pure... Chevy dealers today. On your side, Channel 7 Action News. I work here. Jim Prufrock? Oh my gosh. Um, for some reason, I pictured you older. And you are? Oh, nobody compared to you. I mean, my name is Myrna. Why don't I get Mr. Man? Hello, Ira. Jim, you're back. How the heck are you? Fine. Great. Fantastic. Terrific. Welcome back. Thank you, Ira. Anything I could do for you, buddy? Just give a shout. You could let me sit at my desk. Oh, but it's not. Have you met Mr. Man yet? No. Is that Jim Proofrock I hear? The Jim Proofrock, Mitch Mann, flew down from the Provo office this morning. Pleased to meet you, sir. Oh, call me Mitch. I gotta say, it is a huge honor to shake your hand. A huge honor, huge. America owes you a big debt of gratitude, Jim. I'm not sure that America owes me anything. It was only- Doing my job. Well, damn, if the boy wonder ain't humble to boot. Did you hear that, Ira? You were right, this guy is the real Deal. If you don't mind, I have a lot of work to do. Mind? Are you kidding? I, I am here to make sure your work is given top priority. Now, come on. I'll show you to your office. This is my office. Well, actually, Jim, we 
relocated Ira here. We felt she'd be more comfortable across the hall. Come on. Let me give you the 50 cent tour. Plenty of room to spread out. Ergonomic chair, tax man's best friend. Nice view. We want you happy, Jim. What's going on here? Well, what's going on, Jim, is that you have earned yourself a promotion. How does director of tax investigation Carson City office sound to you? It sounds like Ira's job. I'm certainly not one to usurp another man's livelihood. Well, who's usurping? We're just reorganizing the skill mix. Now, Ira's talents are better suited to more administrative duties. Hell, he seems relieved. He's talking about slowing down a little, taking up paddle tennis. Yeah, yeah I'm just not comfortable. Jim. Sometimes a guy's got to put his comfort on the back burner when duty calls. Of course, with a new title comes a new compensation package. Mr. Man. Mitch. The, the, the money is all well and good. Now, I've arranged a little reception to announce your promotion. Now, don't get too excited. It's nothing fancy, just coffee and donuts, but... Hold up. I'm flattered by the offer, but, but before I accept, I have a few... I'm sure you got a lot of questions. Not questions. Well, concerns. Demands. <laughs> Shoe. Grace, my secretary. She was let go. I want her back. Well, I've just known Myrna for a few hours, but she seems like a real sharp tag. Oopsie. I'm calling Grace. Whatever you have to do. Like I said, Jim, we want you happy. Then you'll give me three cases a year to investigate on my own without any interference. I simply can't be effective on complex cases if I have to clear everything through the main office. Well, you have to understand that I can't just authorize... I've given the service seven years of my life. And maybe, maybe it's time that I look into the private sector where every move that I make won't be micromanaged. Yeah. No, go ahead, put it through. Hi. Well, no problem. Yeah, uh, uh, pork chops will be just fine. Now, where were we? I need the freedom to run... Okay, okay, you win. You sign off lickety-split on your final report on push so I can get the boys upstairs off my back, and I will recommend that you are given three discretionary cases. Deal? Deal. Okay, then. Let's not keep the folks waiting. That's it, guys. Come on, right up here. Just like right. that. Smile. Now, get on over there and greet your adoring public. Ladies and gentlemen, meet your new head honcho, Jim Prufrock. Coffee, Mr. Prufrock? No, oh, thanks, Myrna. I don't drink coffee. Oh, come on. Who doesn't drink coffee? <laughs> Me. And you don't even want to talk to me in the morning till I've had my coffee. Trust me. Just walk right on by. <laughs> Darlene. Hi, Jim. What are you doing here? They called and told me all about your new promotion. Director of the whole office. Wow. Who called you? I brought you something. <sighs> Who called you? I don't know. Someone from the office? I guess they thought you'd want to share your big day with your wife. It just seems strange. I mean, we're not even married anymore, so... This was a bad idea. You're not happy to see me. I thought that you'd be happy to see me. You know what? I I'll leave. This is your day, and I shouldn't really be here. No, wait, don't. I I I'm just surprised. That's all. Listen... I've got a lot of work to do. I, I have to write the final report. Yeah. Yeah, go. You're the new boss. <laughs> we can talk later. At home. Home? You're staying at my house? It used to be my house, too, Jimmy. I was hoping it could be again.
I'm telling you, Grace, it's a whole new ball game around here. But they had a decorator in here asking me about my color scheme and showing me fabric swatches. Now, I can't tell the difference between blue-green and sea-green. I mean, green is green to me. So I was hoping that I could talk you into coming back and helping me out, you know, even, even if it's just for a while. Paint the walls white. Recover the couch in a sturdy navy and stay away from stripes. Is that gunfire I hear, Grace? No, it must have been a car backfiring. I can double your salary. It's not about money, Mr. Prufrock. It's a matter of principle. I ran the 7C because circumstances called for it. I know, Grace. And I don't know what story they gave you, but the 1040s from the citizens of Push were not in the database. They didn't exist. And 48 hours later, they suddenly turn up, and I'm called incompetent. Grace, Grace, that's, that's all water under the bridge. They've promised to stay out of our hair. Uh, talk about a newer, friendlier IRS. And you believe it? I, I, I think, yeah. Yeah, I do. This, this man guy, he seems like he really wants to shake things up. Make some changes. I mean, yeah, this, this could be a great opportunity. Great opportunities make me nervous. Either that or I got some kind of hormonal imbalance. Anyway, you're on your own. Enjoy your corner office, Mr. Prufrock. You really do deserve it. Whole place could look so good. <laughs> Where'd you get the money? From you, silly. All those monthly checks. I wasn't drinking it all away. I started saving so I could show you. You redecorated my house to get me back? Begging you from pay phones wasn't getting me anywhere. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. This is just the beginning of the evening because I also made you dinner. <laughs> Uh, Darlene, slow down. We need to talk. Yeah, but we can talk over dinner. I got steaks and baked potatoes. Darlene. I got your message. And it really meant a lot to me to hear you say those things about our marriage being the happiest years of your life. When I left you that message, I was in a potentially dangerous situation. I, I thought that I might die out there. And... Oh, God. I'm such an idiot. See, I thought that, that you meant those things, but you didn't, did you? You, you just wanted to go out the good guy. <sighs> They're burned. Who am I kidding, trying to be the perfect wife? You know, Darlene, they were the happiest years of my life. I, they, they, 
You're also the saddest. I mean, it, it didn't work. Darlene, our marriage failed. at this gas station the other day buying gas you know and I, I saw this family there's a little girl mom and dad and and the little girl was helping the dad wash the windows and the mom was pumping the gas you know and then the little girl she tells a silly joke it's like knock knock who's there flower flower who flower on your head their heads off and I I'm riveted like I'm watching a damn movie and the gas pump thing is beeping at me asking me if I want a receipt and I'm just standing there crying I'm done messing up Jimmy I'm happy you're back Fifteen on the dot. Case closed. Inside that camera, just between the capacitor and the infrared sensor, Plenty of fluids and... The cleaning... Colgate 2-in-1, toothpaste and real mouthwash. And this is the... ...style suite with meticulously crafted sinks... In Wendy's home, higher level. And Supreme, it's better here. And remember, our pickup windows open till midnight or later, so you can eat great even late. Imagine a serial rapist so thin he squeezed through window bars, attacking women, whispering to them in the dark. Next, Diane Sawyer on the trail with the real crime scene investigators as they hunt and catch a rapist killer on primetime.
like waffles. Waffles? Yeah, that's the uh, general idea here, but I forgot to grease this thing, so they're kind of sticking. I thought your idea of breakfast was coffee and a cigarette. Oh, well, the new me no longer considers nicotine one of the four major food groups. <laughs> Don't you like waffles? Yeah, sure. I I'm just running late. I'll uh, pick up something on the way. Have a good day, boss. I'll grab some Ahabs. My treat. I'm sorry I caused you so much grief on this investigation. Yeah, I, I know that at times my behavior bordered on insubordination. Jim, it's okay. No. Ira, this needs to be said. And my promotion. Hey, don't feel bad on my account. I know better than most that the, you know, the service can be a demanding and fickle mistress. You really distinguished yourself. Now many guys take on the mob and win. I don't know, Ira. I'm synthesizing all the data and writing my final report. But th there are some big holes that uh, I'm not sure that I can paper over. As much as we try to balance the books, there's always some discrepancies. This is more than that. See, I still don't know who sent that initial fax. No one in town confessed to being the mole, and I mean, though I have my theories, I... Yeah, and who paid my bail? You know, is, is it the same person? And why not reveal themselves? And now that the investigation's over, you know, and, unless there, there, there's more to it than... Hey, uh... file the report. Bury your concerns in the footnotes if, if that makes you feel better. But send it off and forget about it. Myrna? Myrna? I'm on my 10-minute break, Mr. Proofrock. Oh. Sorry. What are these? Don't know. They came addressed to you, but I was on my break. Well, thanks. Uh, resume your... Uh, Break. I never figured you for a gun enthusiast. Grow up with guns, it's about as out of the ordinary as a toaster. Grace, I am here to beg me to come back. Yeah, I figured. No, Grace, I'm not begging you. I'm telling you. I need your help. When did we change the font on the 1040 Schedule C? We went from Courier to Times Roman in September 93. Look at this. Push return from 1992. I don't understand. This should be in Courier. These returns have been forged, faked, doctored by somebody good, but not good enough. I knew these returns were not in the database. We have to entertain the possibility that elements within the IRS are somehow linked with the criminal conspiracy and push. But this whole thing goes much higher than Dwight Sloan. If I come back, and I mean if, I have a few demands. Sure. First, I'm not going to send any more checks to your ex. She just uses them to bankroll her bad habits, and it doesn't sit well with my conscience. Well, actually, it looks like you won't have to. It, it seems like we're going to get back together. Mr. Proofrock, pardon me 
for speaking so openly, but they got a shelf full of self-help books for what's wrong with you. So, you'll come back? And I'm not wearing any pantyhose in the office anymore. I don't care if it's IRS regulation, they're just too hot and they're too damn uncomfortable. I was just about to call work and start nagging you. Ah, oh, you look so tired. You know, you work too hard, Jim Prufrock, and it is my duty to see that you relax. <laughs> ah, you're hot. Let me fix you something nice and cold to drink. Always monogrammed, always pressed sign of a gentleman. And you can never tell when one might come back to you. Bring up camera four. Enhance area 12C. Freeze it. Lemon wedge in your iced tea, honey? Jim? 8 p.m. Who the hell's APM? That gentleman is Alfred Michael Prufrock. Jim's father. He used to work for us. Are we on? Hey, my name's Derek Cecil. I played Jim Prufrock on Push Nevada. I don't know how much time we have, so... About a year ago, Sean Bailey and Ben Affleck came to me with a collection of documents detailing a massive conspiracy at a company called Watermark Consolidated. They received these documents anonymously. Now, none of us took it seriously. We just expected... We thought it'd be a good story. We, we didn't expect that, uh... There are powerful people who don't want the full story to be told. Now, I know, don't believe anything you see on TV, but believe me, the conspiracy is real. Watermark is real. This is the last episode of Push Nevada. We posted the Watermark documents on www.pushtimes.com. Okay, 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 look. The following words seem to be significant. In order, five, longitude, underwear, southeast, Bodnick, Elliott. Go. Okay, we gotta get out of here. I'll see you again on Monday night. Come on, Bob. Honey, do these boots match this jacket? Yeah. Is this Craftsman matches Kenmore?